Hey guys, Marissa at KitchenTableStamper.com. I don't know if you caught yesterday's video, but Coffee and a Mystery Card, we played um, a game we do every other Thursday in the Kitchen Table Stamper Craft Social. And we made these awesome birthday cards with the Kitchen Table Stamper Shortcut Card Sketch number one. Now, today I've got a really cute matching treat box for you. All right, let's get these out of the way here. If you like this card, the link is in the description below. It also goes through and answers the questions that you've had for me about our um, sampler and summer card sketch series. If you're interested in joining us for the sampler and summer card, card sketch series, you can get all the information at the blog. Our summer card sketch series features the awesome kitchen table stamper shortcut card sketches in a binder form. It's the only way you can get this tool. And a summer sketch series, six Fridays in a row through the summer, we're going to do more awesome cards using the card sketch. So check that out. And now let's make the matching treat box. So I found these stuffed puffs, big bites at my local Dollar Tree. I thought how cute, they're birthday cake flavor and I couldn't resist. So we're making this little box for these adorable treats. All right, let's get started with some Misty Moonlight cardstock and Bubble Bath cardstock for our box. I've got a um, cardstock template here and I always include the picture of the cardstock template in the project sheet, which is available on the blog. Just follow the link where it says project details below. And the box top is six and seven sixteenths by three and 15 sixteenths. That's our bubble bath piece. The box base is four and 15 sixteenths by seven and seven sixteenths. Now I had made this box lid just a little bit bigger the first time. So six and a half by four is one sixteenth of an inch bigger. And I was finding that because this treat is so heavy, when you pick up the box, just grab it and pick it up, the box top would slide off. These marshmallows are heavy. So I adjusted the size of this. This is gonna be a very tight fitting lid and box. We're going to do some very simple scoring and trimming get my simply score tool here and for the base of the box the misty moonlight we're going to pop this into the tool and we're going to score on all four sides at one and a half now for our lid we're going to do all four sides at one inch Well, we've got the lid here. We're going to mark center on these long rectangles. That way we can punch a little um, thumb notch that just makes removing this tight lid a little bit easier. You can actually get your fingers up underneath it and slide it straight up. So we're gonna pop this into the Simply Score tool. We're gonna center these. So zero is on the six and we're gonna center it out from there and we've got 16th of an inch so we're really just looking for a guide so that when we punch we um, can punch pretty close to center all right so i'm going to mark i'm going to flip i'm going to put my center let us see here i'm off by a bit now let's grab a half inch circle punch and we can just make those little thumb notches That'll make this easier to maneuver. All right, so just center your little mark about halfway. Center your little mark, punch about halfway, and now we've got some convenient little grooves to help remove the lid. For both of these pieces, we're going to work the folds with the bone folder and we're going to trim them both the same way. So I'm just going to bring in this template for now and we're going to follow that same pattern cutting for both the top and the bottom. All right, I love this combination of misty moonlight and bubble bath. What do you think? You're liking the return in the new colors? 
All right, so to cut like the template, we're gonna cut straight along the long rectangle. We're going to angle cut the square. And then we're going to just bevel this side a little bit too. It'll give us nice clean edges. All right, we're gonna repeat that four times for each, the bottom and the top. Straight on the long rectangle and angled on the square and then finish the outside edge with a little angle cut. All right, there's the base of our box. Now the lid. All right, there's our lid. Now let's set aside the base and the template. And we're gonna do some really cool stamping with a really cool stamp. So we're gonna use the um, sketched plaid background stamp. We're going to put some details on the sides of our lid and on our die cut. So I'm gonna bring in a couple of handy dandy little pieces here that made my life so much easier. I've got um, a friend is a, works in a uh, medical office and gave me some sticky notepads. So we're looking for just something that's got some stick like a, um, a post-it or a sticky note. And then I've got some small grid paper. And what we're gonna do is we're going to mask this box at the score lines just so that we don't make a mess with the ink anywhere else. And the funny but true story is the first um, prototype I made of this box, I actually decided that I wanted to add the plaid details after I had adhered everything to the top. So that's part of what um, this was all about is I had to protect everything that was already uh, adhered to the top of the box. But if you're thinking that this might be difficult or um, I'd encourage you to think again it's actually so easy that the first prototype type i made of this box i stamped the edges with the plaid while the top of the box was already decorated all right so we're going to do one line of plaid so we're going to just cover everything else it keeps from getting your fingers inky it keeps from making ink um, fingerprints or splats or getting it anywhere unintentional while you're doing this process so i'm just going to hold my paper it doesn't matter if you ink on the paper but we want to ink just that first row of plaid then not our table <laughs> then we're going to take our lid we want to line it up so that the pattern starts and stops at the same place so this one's wide enough where we can start at a vertical spot and end at a vertical spot so we're going to line that up and we're going to bring the edge of the box almost to the edge of the rubber and if you get it nice and straight and just show a little bit of that rubber you can set it down on the paper then you can just burnish the design right onto the edge of the lid now we don't want to get our fingers inky after we've done so well to mask and everything so when you're burnishing those tabs just put a little piece of scratch paper over top and just burnish now what you're gonna have is a cute little row of plaid on the outside edge of your box with nothing on the lid. And we're gonna rotate the mask here and mask off the short side. We're gonna ink up this one row again. And we're going to line up so that the pattern stops and starts the same place. And so you'll see on this side, you can also start and stop on the vertical. So we got that. Now we're going to bring it almost to the edge of the stamp. You want to see just a little bit of rubber. Keep it level. Pop it down. Once you got it down, then you can make contact between the box and the stamp. Rub, lift, and now you've got plaid on the short edge. Now you're going to re repeat for the other long and the short edge and get that plaid to go all the way around your box. Is that not just the cutest little detail? All right, I'm going to ink stamp the other two sides. All right, there's the last short side and isn't that just so cute? Perfect for spring. All right, although it feels like summer today. Let me put this 
ink pad and inky stamp aside so we don't have any craft catastrophe. And let's assemble the box with some tear and tape adhesive. All right, everybody's got tear and tape, two pieces on each tab. Then I'm going to remove the liner with my take your pick tool. Okay, last one. Now we're going to assemble, just making corners here. There's our lid. And our bottom, same way. Nice tight corners. And let's fill with our big bites, our big heavy bites, and the lid. Now again, this is a very snug box. You'll see that you're gonna have to just depress the bottom a tiny bit. Don't misshape it, just push it in a tiny bit and then close. Now, even with that heavy treat in there, your lid isn't gonna come off every time. Oh, that's cute. Okay, so it's a very tight fitting lid. All right, let's bring our sample back in here and we're gonna bring our plaid back in here for just a minute. You'll see that gorgeous new label. So I am working hard to um, love the new labels and new dies from Stampin' Up. Our stitched rectangles and layering circles, things that were my best friends have retired. And so I'm trying to make some new friends. This is the uh, Nested Essentials dies. This is available in the annual catalog and we are gonna use this, um, what did Jackie call it, a regular hexagon? I think that's what these are called. And we're gonna use the second to the smallest. There's also this nice rind, rounded rectangle. I think this one's gonna be easily my friend. And then look at the banners with the double stitching. Is that not wild? Can you see the double stitching? I don't know if, you can, if the camera picked that up, but I think that that's kind of fun, just a new detail of that double stitch. So this is Bubble Path cardstock, and we're gonna go back to our plaid, our sketched plaid background, and Bubble Bath ink. And we're gonna add some of that awesome um, design to our label and give it a little bit more life. All right, ink up the background. I, because it's a very um, linear pattern, we wanna make sure that we're dropping it down even right to left and level top to bottom. Once it's down, you can then cover and burnish to get an impression. I like doing the stamp face up for stuff like this too because then you don't have uphill downhill lines or um, the stamp too far to the right or the left where the pattern looks kind of funny. You got better control this way. And there's our new die cut layer shape for better or worse. All right, now we're going to get our designer series paper, which is from the Bright and Beautiful designer series paper pack. This is one of the new six by six designer series papers from the annual catalog. And if you do this paper sampler and summer sketch series with us, you will get a sample of 13 new designer series papers from the new annual catalog. So you can try a little bit at a time and decide which ones you like and want to order a full package. This one I am loving. I just love the bright colors. All right, my piece for the top of my box is right here and it is one and seven eighths by four and three eighths. We're gonna just glue that to the lid and then we're gonna pop our label on top with some dimensionals. You'll notice that we're using kind of the herringbone pattern today. And in our original sample, we've got like the bohe dot. Very cool patterns in this um, and great colors. All right, there. Got my little dimensionals here. We're gonna support this well. Maybe I'll get some regular sized ones. Need a little more hefty, hefty bump here for this lid. And we're gonna do five because nobody likes a saggy label. And we'll just center that. If you caught our 
video yesterday, then you saw me color the little raccoon dude from the zany zoo to match this gorgeous, bright and beautiful designer series paper. And today we're going to do our little crocodile. So let's get some basic white cardstock and we're gonna stamp with Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And our zany zoo is a cling set, so we do not need our photo, our stamp and pierce mat. Ink this guy up. I inked the tail kind of heavy. Let's see if it stamps nice if I just don't put too much pressure. Not bad, not bad at all. Now let's bring them to life with some Stampin' Blends. I got some new Stampin' Blends burning a hole in my pocket. Got Bubble Bath, Berry Burst, Misty Moonlight, Lemon Lime Twist, Pecan Pie, and we're going to do a bit of accent with Dark Granny Apple and I've got some um, smoky slate, light and dark. I'm gonna start right there with the smoky slate. And we are going to color the tires with the dark. And then do, oh, all these little circles here, the wheels and the puddles. Then I'm going to do my bike in Misty Moonlight and the seat too. I'm going to do the basket with Pecan Pie. I'm really loving this color. For the flowers, I'm going to do Dark Bubble Bath for the petals and Dark Berry Burst for the centers. And granny apple green. This is the dark one for the pot, or for the leaves. And we're also gonna do his little toenails. Now for my crocodile himself, or is this an alligator? <laughs> There's quite a debate going on. I'm gonna do dark lemon lime twist for the belly and for all these little teeth on his back. I guess they're scales and not teeth. And then I'm gonna color the rest of him. And you know what, he's kinda big. So I'm gonna do something I don't usually do. I'm gonna use the small bullet point so I can get close to his mouth here and not make his actual teeth green. We want those to stay white. But then once I get out of this kind of tight space right here, I'm going to quickly flip to the brush and then fill with circles. And there he is. Cute, right? All right, let's get our stamp and cut and emboss machine and we're going to cut him out using the Zany Zoo dies. And I didn't even show you this awesome new bundle, did I? So here's our Zany Zoo stamp set. We've got our alligator or crocodile. You can tell me which in the comments. And here's our raccoon. There's also a cute little skunk, a llama, or is that an alpaca? There's some debate about that too. The turtle and our tiger, some cute birthday scent, scent, sentiments. The dyes have awesome, um, what I like to call wingmen or accessory dies. There's a curtain and a ruffle so you can make a stage, a table. There's uh, balloons and clouds and a vase with flowers, two different size trees, a cloud, and some flowers. We're going to use the small flower and a little scrap of this bright and beautiful designer series paper. And it's gonna be the perfect little embellishment for our box. And we're gonna cut out our crocodile with the silhouette die. So let's get our stamp and cut and emboss machine in here and get cutting. And 
there's the star of the show and a fun little paper embellishment that we can use. Let's get these aside and finish up our box. We're gonna have to stamp our sentiment on that little banner next. My little banner came from the Cracker and Treats dies. I love all the uh, sentiment, the little labels that come in that set. We're gonna stamp with Misty Moonlight. And my sentiment is from Sentimental Park. Any little greeting will do. I'm gonna grab our stamp and pierce mat and stamp happy birthday to the right so we have room for that little flower we cut. Cute. I'm gonna layer that with a misty moonlight banner. Let's get the ink out of here. Let's attach these two banners. I'm just gonna use a little bit of dry adhesive on the center and we're going to offset them. So we have a little bit more impact. And let's bring our box in here. I'm going to just adhere my alligator with some liquid glue right to the label, not all the way to the tail. So just in the center here, it's gonna go off the edge of this um, hexagon a regular hexagon and then what I'm going to do is grab take your pick tool and I'm going to add a little bit of dimensional adhesive underneath the wheel here and underneath the top of the head over here just to support what goes over the edge of our label then we're going to get really tricksy and we're gonna take a little tiny strip of dimensional. So I've got a regular dimensional that was cut in half and I'm cutting just the tiny bit of edge off and I'm gonna lift the tail a little bit. <laughs> so cute. The banner's gonna need some dimensionals also. I'm gonna do half dimensionals but not all the way to the left side here because the ribbon's going to go underneath that and the knot has got enough bulk to support that edge so we've got our sticky banner but plenty of room to put our ribbon underneath lift that tail a bit and tuck the banners under don't cover the greeting now my ribbon is from the combo pack that goes with the zany zoo yeah ribbon duo combo pack if you're searching for it it has a petal pink stripe and this triple stitched lemon lime twist and this ribbon has just been a absolute favorite what kind of big bow so that you can have enough room in the center to tuck it underneath your little greeting banners. When you got something you like, then you cut it away from the spool. And clean up both ends. That one's a little pointy. Now, I like to use my glue dots for this bow, and I'm going to put one on the top side of the bow, flip it and put one on the bottom side of the bow. Then we can use the take your pick tool to just slide these right underneath. Happy birthday. Give your bow a little finesse. Another glue dot, I love glue dots, I used them for lots of little embellishment things in the um, Queen Bee stamp a stack class and ever since then I'm like stick it out with a glue dot stick it out with a glue dot so we got a glue dot on our little flower and we're gonna add that underneath the happy banner and we're gonna cover the center of that flower with some of these awesome 
Tinsel Gems Triple Pack. So we've got uh, Misty Moonlight, Fresh Freesia, and Coastal Cabana all in one tinsely pack of awesomeness. Check these out. They're new in the annual catalog. And there is our happy birthday treat box. Zany Zoo happy birthday treat box. Let me bring our awesome cards back in. Here's our Zany Zoo birthday cards made with shortcut card sketch number one. Check out the video for the card and at kitchentablestamper.com. The link below, project details, will take you to the blog post where you can get the printable project sheet for our adorable box, including the template and measurements, everything that you need to try it yourself. If you've got any questions about the project or about the sampler and summer card sketch series, our awesome shortcut card sketches, or if there's anything I can do to keep you crafty, email marissa at kitchentablestamper.com. And to shop Stampin' Up! 24-7, you can buzz over to marissaalvarez.stampinup.net. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.